America that hasn't read about the Rays, here they are. The, here are Louise and Clifford Ray. Say what you want about these people. They love their children. And they had no interest being on the front page of everybody's daily newspaper, but they were. They wouldn't... Half the school kept their uh, kids out. Half the parents kept their kids out of school because they have four children, three of whom have tested, as we say, uh, HIV positive. They're hemophiliac. And the treatment from hemophiliacs involves, among other things, a, uh, how shall, a concentrate that, in l lay terms, imprecise as they are, involves uh, occasionally, or used to, blood that was contaminated. These children do not have AIDS symptoms. They're not thin. I just met them. They're gorgeous, bright kids. And half the student body was absent when these parents escorted their children to school in Arcadia, Florida. The agony does not end there. Somebody burned their house down. Now, how do you feel about this? Does it bother you if your child is in class with a child who's been tested for HIV for AIDS? Is this ignorance? Are we frightened of something we don't understand? You're on the run, aren't you? Do you have a home? No, right now we don't. You don't have a home. Do you have a job? Not right now. It's kind of hard to work when you're a nomad, isn't it? Well, that's true. You gotta, we got to find a place to locate before we can get a job. As soon as we find that place, I'm attempting to hunt them. You must be losing a little bit of confidence in your fellow man, not to mention women. Is, uh, how are you doing emotionally with this? Well, you know, it, it's hard, but you have to kind of take one day at a time. Um, you know, I believe there's a lot of good people in the world. There has to be. And I think the problem is that the ones who are uneducated as far as AIDS are speaking so loudly that it frightens the ones like us who understand. The most frightened uh, may be the most ignorant. Uh, not, not, as, not inherently ignorant, but the ones with the least information. And that's what fuels the prejudice, isn't it? Ignorance. That's true. If, if they understand the disease, there's no reason to be afraid. Um, but the ones who do not understand, they are. They're, they're frightened. I can understand their fear. Yeah. But what I can't understand is the ones who don't want to learn or who refuse to learn. Well, as far as you know, our faith in fellow man, uh, we've received a lot of letters from Have a you? lot of people. And some of the letters state no more, come live with us, we'll take and treat you right. And these letters mean a lot. I mean, right now, these, these type of letters we, we look for in the mail, people saying, we understand. We wouldn't be mean to you. We wouldn't treat your kids wrong. You could live in the same house with me. We get a lot of letters like that right now. You'll just, uh, you'll never be able to state your uh, admiration for the people who supported you in Arcadia. And we should say that. Arcadia is not is not a town that uh, is filled with uh, people who have only a little information who are ready to throw other people out. There's a lot of... Uh, I don't know if you're Christian, but there's a lot of folks there that behaved in a Christian way. I'm sure you want to say that, huh? Yeah, there it was a lot of them. It was real good. We got a lot of friends still left in Arcadia, but the majority of them that uh, don't, they, they're kind of leery about saying anything just as it, because the opposition group is so strong. It's your politicians in Arcadia. You're, you're, I mean, start with the mayor, your school board, your county commissioner. What about them? They're all opposition. They don't want the children in school. They don't... I mean, this is where the opposition is, and, and, and it, obviously they feel that they're not, uh, they can't get reelected unless they, unless they opposition, unless right. they're against having your kids in school. Yeah, this is where we're getting all the elected officials are, are have, have took the stand. Two, we have attacked a politician or body in that community by attacking and suing the school board, and by that we're a threat to all politicians within that community. Right. Let me see that first tape, uh, Brian, if we can. This is. Uh, no picnic showing you this. Here's what once was the Ray's house. This is how frightened some people can get. <clears throat> when did you discover, how'd this happen? Were you home? No, we weren't home. Uh, we were at my sister-in-law's house. My little brother was there. That's a doll. At the time. That's a cricket doll. A, a cricket doll. Yeah. Uh, what happened? Uh, your, somebody was there? My little brother was. He was had hurt his back. He was on medication. And uh, he was took his medication went to sleep. His, his room was in the back of the house. And uh, he woke up. 
He said the house was full of smoke. He stepped out into the dining room area and everything was smoke. He turned, went back into his bedroom and threw his weights through his bedroom window and went out through the window. He was ex exercise weights. Yeah. yeah. It damn near killed him. Yeah, he, he spent time in the hospital for smoke inhalation. Uh, do you have any suspects? Uh, none that I know of right now. Did you receive, I've seen phone calls and yeah. all that uh, stuff? Uh, yeah. Um, we went to the store late one night and come home and the phone rang. And which, from the time all this has started, it's not unusual for the phone to ring real late at night. And I picked it up and it was a woman on the other end and, you know, obviously trying to disguise her voice. And the only thing she said is, your children will die and hung up. And uh, it stunned me. You know, you, you see it in the movies and you hear about it, but somehow, you, you know, it just never really happens. Um, and then I think it was the next week, we were away for the weekend, and my brother-in-law received four calls within about an hour and a half time period, one of which was a threat to burn the house down. Mm -hmm. Your attorney is Judy Cavanaugh. You are an uh, attorney from Sarasota. Uh, you represent a family, quite literally, on the lamb. I mean, in a sense, they're running away from this fear in order to save, uh, to promote the well-being of their kids. It, it, it's an incredible situation because they've, they've lost everything. And when that happens, that's a tragedy under any circumstance. But to relocate, instead of thinking, where's the best housing, where are the j best job opportunities, we have to find out where we can get the children in school without a court order. And, and that's not easy these and, days. And, and the first inkling that the rays are moving into my neighborhood... Exactly. And um, uh, it's, 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 it's just ignorance. That's the only thing I can say. And it's also become politicized. We have a medical issue, and it is a medical issue. And it's become politicized, and we have educators who are basically saying, we don't believe the doctors. And, and we have doctors who are saying, I won't treat AIDS patients. Exactly. And, and it's... Uh, it, it, doctors. We need some leadership. And I think the medical profession has shown leadership, but the educators <clears throat> and the politicians need to start stepping up the plate, too. We really do have some honest-to-goodness MDs coming in here just a little bit later. And uh, Ms. Cavanaugh, uh, you're an attorney at law, but let's just let's go over a couple of things. There's a lot of misunderstanding about hemophilia, first of all. Hemophiliacs, <laughs> yeah. they don't, it's not about bleeding to death. Uh, it is about the inability of the body to arrest internal bleeding. True. And the children, your children, who have already established are very, very healthy, um, obviously did have the blood transfusion of the... Uh, I called it a concentrate, which yeah. was HIV contaminated. How am I doing so far? Real good. <laughs> How long ago was that? Well, we know that it had to be prior to 1985 because in 1985 they began to screen for HIV. So any time prior to that, I mean, it could have been with their very first injection. It could have been any time. Um, in order to make their medication, it's a blood byproduct, and it takes like anywhere from 10 to 20,000 different pints of blood because... The factor is such a small, minute part. They call it a factor. It's a, it's right. a concentrate which may involve as many as a thousand different donors to make up the factor. Is that that right? Twenty thousand. Ten to twenty thousand for each injection they have to take. That's how many people they can come in contact so with. So this material that's injected is a is a consolidated product from twenty thousand different live human beings. Yes. We should not be surprised then that before eighty five the uh, HIV contamination rate was pretty high True. for this particular therapy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we don't have to worry about that. Right. Uh, maybe there are, maybe there is a guy. We got, we're fixing something. <clears throat> Some other very uh, reasonably good news, and that's all we can call this amid what's happened to you. Your kids and other hemophiliacs appear to be more resistant to HIV than do other patients. Is that right? They seem to think that it was something to do in the processing that it somehow weakened the virus. But at this point, they're not exactly sure how or why, but that's true. Very, very small number of hemophiliacs who are positive go on to develop AIDS. A small percentage do. Right, like smaller 3%. Than, smaller than other risk groups. A lot smaller. What are you going to do? Where are you going? Hopefully to find a place to put the boys in school and to try to get back to a normal life. You know? How can you... How can you uh, uh, 
I mean, if this is Arcadia, isn't it a reflection of this whole? Uh, I mean, we can't nail Arcadia as some sort of rock-ribbed uh, Neanderthal. You know what I mean? These are people too, yeah. just like everybody else. Where won't this happen? Well, we're, it, it could happen anywhere. Arcadia could have been in any of our states. Um, but what we're hoping is because of what happened in Arcadia, that people are going to pick up books, they're going to start learning from what the CDC says. And following their conscience. And following the guidelines and trying to be a little more um, conscientious and say, what if it were me? If your child would bite another child, and believe me, I do not expect that to happen. I've just met your kids. But isn't that the real agony here? Well, my little girl, not too long ago, I guess it's been within the last year, bit one of her brothers. And she's still negative. So, you know, I, I, I'd like to say there hasn't been a documented case of transmission no. by biting. There's theory that all. it's potential. And there's no, there's no documented be. case of transmission by saliva. No, no. there's no documented case of it trans and transmission other than the very specific modes of transmission, which I'm sure the doctors will describe. And, and that's people so, are theorizing about a risk that simply hasn't materialized. We don't know about a kid-to-kid -kid transfer. No. Listen to this. Deborah French is from Hornell, New York. She's 28 years old. She's a beautician, works for a living just like the Rays do. Proudly middle class, I assume. And she's single. And yeah, she dates people. So did you when you were single. <laughs> <laughs> the rumor hit that she had AIDS. No, no evidence, just like all rumors. Obscene phone call. She went, where'd, they, where'd you go? They gave everybody a glass, they gave you a plastic glass. Yes, in one of the taverns that I frequently go to. They gave you a plastic glass? Yes, my nephew was with us, because my sister also went in, and they gave him a glass, and then they gave me a plastic cup. And it was just the day that I got my test results back, stating that I did not have it, so I just said, when did you Isn't first realize this wasn't funny, that this was... In uh, March, it just started out a little bit. How many people live in Hornell? Uh, approximately 10,000. And in March, it was just, you heard it, but not a lot. And then in April, it just blew up. And I would say a good two-thirds of the population of Hornell had heard that I had, that I had AIDS. And the phone started ringing. Oh, yeah. And people were saying what? <laughs> I would get obscene phone calls. I would have men that I had dated before calling me up, asking me if it was true, if I had AIDS. Sometimes they'd tell me who they were, and other times they wouldn't. And just terrible things. Just well, then. How, how'd you handle this emotion? I mean, did you cry or did you get mad? Or I mean, I don't understand. What, what happens to a person when... Oh, it's, it, you have a feeling of defeat because you know you don't have it. But yet, all these other people are saying it and people are actually believing it that's the hard thing is to actually think that people would believe that i had aids and even and you went to the newspaper didn't you yes i took it to the evening tribune i was just going to take out an ad and have my doctor's statement put in the paper and leave it at that but then the editor of the paper decided it was a good human interest story and they ran it on the front page and here I am. <laughs> uh, but did it help? Yeah, it did. But then a lot of other people were saying, well, um, doesn't the test only last for like six months or something? And don't you, doesn't she have to be there, retested? You're never going to know who believes and who... No. You know, know, people accused of sex abuse. We've had some of those people on it. Who, it wasn't, they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. It's like fly paper. Mm -hmm. Never get it off. Mm -hmm. I said, how do you feel... I said, what? He said, I can never be chaperone at a Girl Scout camp overnight again. And the guy, isn't that true? You must really feel a empathy for these folks. Huh? Oh, a lot. I never got threatening phone calls, but like I said, just the obscene phone calls, and they, wouldn't, they would last all night long. They'd, they'd start ringing at 4 o'clock in the morning and wouldn't quit till like 7 in the morning. You have tried to understand how the origin of this rumor. You were a very, very honest woman, I must say. You've told us more than we have a right to know about you. Uh, 
we've already established you're 28 and single, and uh, not unlike millions of other men and women, you enjoy a beer or whatever it might be right. after work. Is it that? Is it your visibility? You're an attractive blonde. Do you know what I mean? Uh, was it? Is, are you the lightning rod in Hornell, New York? I mean, I wonder if... Uh, well, don't miss my point here. This is very... You know what I mean, don't yeah. you? I have no idea why it was me. You do acknowledge also having had gay friends, or have gay yes. friends. Yes, I... Non-intimate gay relationships, you Right, have. just as friends. I, when I lived in California, I had a lot out there. And then when I went to school in Rochester for my cosmetology, I, most of the people I knew were gay. Uh, I don't want to misunderst be misunderstood. You aren't gay or bi. No. But you have, some of your best friends are. Okay. <laughs> are you okay now? Are you feeling better? Or uh, can you still, you couldn't walk your dog at night. That's the only time I could walk the dog, was at night. <laughs> it's like, because I would walk down the street and I would feel like people were staring at me and I could almost feel them slowing down and craning their necks and looking at me. And I only felt comfortable after midnight to take my dog out. Imagine living in a city where you're only comfortable after midnight walking around. This <laughs> we all should move to Hornell. <laughs> Saul Adelstein joins us, attorney at law from Brooklyn. Now listen to this. He represents a woman who has AIDS phobia, and we better not laugh. She finds out her husband, throughout their many years of marriage, was gay and had dalliances in subways and restrooms. And did he test positive? No. She thought he did, or she thought, my God, I have AIDS. Is that... Well, actually, her um, point is, I don't care how he tests. I don't believe all of you people. Uh, the doctors, if they're not treating uh, patients who have AIDS, and dentists are uh, gloving up before they go into the mouths, cops. and if cops now are wearing gloves, if judges are now holding court in regard to prisoners who have AIDS in the parking lot because they don't want to be near them, she says, I don't care what this test shows. It's very possible. I've been living with this man for 25 years. He wasn't gay. He was bisexual. Now, during a marriage counseling session, how would you lie? You women who are in the audience, how would you like to discover that your husband, who you've been betting down now for the last 25 years... Betting down, I don't know if that's... <laughs> Here in Connecticut, we thought we, that's expressing oneself intimately. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, in Brooklyn, we call it the way it actually is. <laughs> but how would you like to discover that all of a sudden this, uh, your husband is bisexual? And after he leaves you on Saturday night, He's in the bars, he's in the uh, subway trains, he's in toilets. Now all of a sudden, um, you go to a marriage counselor and you want to find out what's wrong with your marriage and he goes to the marriage counselor and he says, well, I didn't want to admit it, but I'm going to admit it now. I'm really a bisexual. And the marriage counselor says, you're really gay. And he goes, oh, right, I am. Well, the woman fainted. She was paralyzed with fear. She said, well, my God, if you're a bisexual, how could you come home to my marital bed? after doing what you're doing. My God, you could have given me AIDS. Well, don't forget they were in a divorce situation. And he's, his response was, if I could have AIDS, you could have AIDS. If I'm dying, you're dying. Chief divorce. Now she uh, comes to me for a divorce action. All this lady wants to talk about is AIDS, nothing else. More or less, our state is more or less a no-fault divorce state. Adultery is of not a great concern. You go for your divorce, and then we discover what we're going to do in regard to the money problems. She didn't want to talk about anything except AIDS. She quit a job. She's Lady Macbeth with her hands like this. I could give AIDS to people. I can give AIDS to people. I didn't want to uh, bring on any AIDS case, but I think for any wrong, and it seemed to me this was a wrong. The husband participated in a wrong. He was negligent. He obviously should have either told her he was bisexual or refrained from having sex. We brought on a lawsuit. Does she have AIDS? No. She's phobic. If you got stuck in an elevator, do you want to go into that elevator the next day? Is it possible you could develop claustrophobia? Well, she developed phobia. I might have AIDS. I can't marry. I can't have children. A year from now, I can have AIDS. I thought there should be some legal redress for that. And, and what exactly, I have to break here, what is the legal redress? What is the legal uh, hook you're using? Unfortunately, we went into court and sued for the only thing we could sue for, which was money. But on what ground now? What is it you're... 
she doesn't have AIDS, he doesn't have AIDS. It, it sounds like you're really saying, judge, he made her crazy, he should pay her something. You got it. Psychic oh, that's injury. Oh. He made her crazy. Well, hell, I can be a lawyer if that's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back in just a moment. A microwave cake is moist, can it be? It's microwave from Pillsbury. Loving from the oven, Pillsbury. We're warm, we're hot. Beep, beep, pop, pop. The microwave cake, they'll love a lot. Lemon, lemon, giggle, giggle. Loving from the oven, beep, beep. When some people find out that Oscar Mayer honey ham has always been only 25 calories a slice, they dive right in. For some people, hearing that Oscar Mayer oven roasted turkey has always been less than 25 calories a slice calls for an encore. Presenting furniture stylist, Mr. Joseph Gilbert. The bitterness of poor quality furniture remains long after the sweetness of a low price is forgotten. Since 1929, Gilbert's has always maintained the highest standards, yet at prices no more than you would pay for the ordinary. Our furniture, lamps, and accessories are never inflated for sales. In years to come, your selection will always prove valuable to you. That's because good design and quality are never outdated. So, for furniture you will be proud of year after year, come to Gilbert's Fine Furniture for true down-to-earth values to fit any budget. That's Gilbert's Fine Furniture at 651 South Federal Highway, just a few minutes south of Atlantic Boulevard in Pompano Beach. Use your visa or master charge. Thank you. Uh, I saw a hand. Whose was it? That's Where are there. you? Here? Yes, ma'am. The young lady that was up before that was a hairdresser. Yes. Uh, did this stigma affect her job at all? Did you? How'd you do with that? Uh, I've got so many people on this program today. We don't have room in the. Uh, you were talking about Deborah. Where are you? Uh, you didn't lose your job. Did you? um, I'm temporarily unemployed because I'm trying to get a beauty supply house started in Hornell, so it really didn't affect my job. Well, to follow up on uh, hairdresser on regard to hair phobia, I have a client that no longer goes to her hairdresser because her hairdresser was gay. She has hairdresser phobia. <laughs> she won't go to her hairdresser anymore. Yeah. Oh. Was he gay? <laughs> are you there? Call her. I'm glad you waited. Go ahead. Hi, yes, I'm here. I'm calling to lend my support to these people. My husband has hemophilia and was diagnosed this past January. And frankly, I'm ashamed of those Americans who react to this and to us with such ignorance. We have been fortunate because we have been treated by our friends and our family, our clergy, uh, with much more respect and dignity than, unfortunately, these people in Florida and I'm sure in other places in the country. And I'm calling, I'm calling simply to say that you have more to worry about in your lives and it would be so much more uh, dignified of the American people to treat you with the, with the respect that you deserve. Right. Please, just a couple of questions. What, what general area... Are you calling from New York City? I'm calling from New Jersey. New Jersey. Uh, what is your husband's condition? He's been diagnosed, but there are no symptoms? No, he's been diagnosed. He has had uh, pneumonia, pneumocystis pneumonia. He has had thrush, and he is in, uh, at this time, in almost perfect health. You would not know that he is ill to look at him. He's uh, continuing to live in a, quote, normal right. lifestyle. Do, do, does his employer know? Uh, certain people in his employment know. Uh, so his job is not jeopardized then? At this time it is not, and I don't anticipate that it will. 
Uh-huh. I can also say that um, I have family who live in Florida, and it seems that in certain, and I'm not going to put down Florida per se, but in certain areas of the country, AIDS has been uh, treated with more education than others, and that it appears that here we don't have the same difficulties than when we were in Florida and we went to a hospital and we were refused treatment because my husband has AIDS. That does not happen here. Uh-huh. What city in Florida, may we ask? Um, Hallandale is where we were visiting at the time. We went to North Miami. We were refused at the same exact hospital that we were accepted to uh, in uh, North Broward, which is only a half hour away. Right. And this was only for lab work. It was not uh, for my husband to have been treated in the hospital inpatient. This was for outpatient lab work and an x-ray, which obviously right. has no physical contact with the patient. So, uh, hang on just a sec. You have a question? Go ahead. Be brief. Um, why is it any worse for them, the, uh, I'm referring to the attorney, why is it any worse for that person to have had a homosexual relationship than a heterosexual relationship? I mean, these days, you know, uh, homos homosexuals are just as Couldn't bad as... you get the phobia by, you know, just a plain old straight night of... Uh, I think the doctors could probably the best. Uh, no, no, no. We're talking management. about. We are agreed that heterosexuals can transfer the disease as well as homosexuals. If that's true, then I assume your lawsuit on on the case of mental anguish in that, you wouldn't have any trouble bringing it in behalf of someone who was. Uh, Absolutely not. There is it's no consistent. difference. Huh? The theory is consistent. So you think the it, legal theory? Is so if a husband cheats on his wife. <clears throat> She could sue him for making her crazy, wondering whether he brought AIDS home. You're darn right. I'm getting about calls throughout the entire country. I think I'm going to be out of business. There's going to be no more divorces. Nobody's cheating anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back in just a moment. Whenever I want to feel special, I turn out the lights mm. and turn to Candlelight, elegant chef-created dinners from Candlelight. Chicken cordon bleu, exquisitely French, filled with smoked ham and cheese, or beef sirloin tips, English style, in a regal red wine sauce. Whenever you want to feel special, turn out the lights and turn to Candlelight from Weight Watchers. And now there are three new Candlelight dinners like Ville Parmigiana in a zesty tomato sauce. Looking back at quality Kmart portraits is like traveling through time. His button nose, her first party dress. And right now, you can save your memories and save $7 on your 21 portrait package. You get two 8x10s, three 5x7s, 15 wallets, and a giant 10x13 wall portrait, all for just $12.95. So save your memories and save $7 on your professional portrait package this week at Kmart. At Stanley Steamer, we guarantee quality professional service. Just ask any Stanley Steamer customer. I called Stanley Steamer, made an appointment. They arrived right on time. They cleaned the carpet throughout, cleaned the upholstery, deodorized the dining area, and scotch guarded. They did an excellent job. We're fast, friendly, professional, and I'm very pleased. It's been three weeks, and it still looks wonderful. Call today for other local specials. Big juicy blueberries bursting as they bake. Keebler makes new elfin loaves just like Mom used to make. Only smaller. The Keebler elves bake real fruits, nuts, and spices into snacking size elfin loaf snack breads. Then wrap them and rush them fresh to your grocer's freezer. Blueberry, banana, carrot, raisin, or a snack or a break. New Keebler elfin loaves just like Mom used to make. Only smaller. That's the burned-out home of Louise and Clifford Ray, about whom you've read so much of late. They and their family are, well, m better maybe than uh, some of others would be, emotionally speaking, after what's happened to them. Three children, hemophiliacs, who happen to have been tested HIV positive. They show no symptoms of AIDS. Well, guess who's here? Mervyn Silverman, MD. You are president of the American Foundation for AIDS Research and director of the Robert Wood Johnson AIDS Health Services Program. You are from San Francisco, 
and you were director of the San Francisco Department of Health for eight years, and you were instrumental in instituting the San Francisco program to combat AIDS. San Francisco is, is proud of uh, having, uh, I think, kicked a lot of tires on the whole issue of getting media and all kinds of other people interested in this. And if the truth be told, all of us were just a little late. Diana Beardsley is with us as well. You are an MD and a PhD and medical director of the Hemophilia Center at Yale Medical School in New Haven. I can only speculate how nervous you must have been listening to me talk about hemophilia. Um, why don't you give us your briefest speech on that? Hemophilia, this allows what? What happens? Hemophilia is an absence of one of the blood clotting factors in the body. It's the only abnormality at all in the syndrome. It was a major problem in old days before we could replace and transfuse patients with the missing clotting factor. Uh, but in modern times, we're able to replace that and control bleeding in these individuals so they live a normal lifetime. Yes. You must be impressed with the, with the uh, research which shows a lower number of HIV positive hemophiliacs actually developing symptoms. Uh, yes, we're often talking about HIV or the AIDS virus and when we're saying these children test positive, they just test positive for the antibody. They show uh, evidence that they have been exposed to the virus at some time and that certainly happened sometime between 77 and 83 when when right. there was contamination neither of you have any doubt that these uh, that the uh, the children uh, the ray children can attend school without jeopardizing the well-being of their fellow classmates or teachers or anybody else there Absolutely. have been a number of studies uh, household studies studies in schools which have shown no transmission of the virus. It doesn't mean that of all the planets lined up one way or another that there might be some risk, but I think we have to look at things in a relative risk. We're, we place our children and ourselves at risk every day. Walking to school, crossing the crosswalk, driving to school, the, the boiler in the school blowing up, lightning striking a child, any of those are a heck of a lot riskier and the, the chance of that happening to the child far greater right. than an exchange of uh, body fluids right. and generally it's sex and drugs that, and I hope that doesn't take place in schools these days. Yeah, well, you never know. Uh, <laughs> listen, uh, as you know, I'm a very brilliant man, but I can, <laughs> I am not yet able to read the mind of another person, but I'm going to make a guess here. I'm going to guess that we have not a few people in this audience who would not send their children to school with the rays. I'm not asking them to stand up and say so. Maybe they'll want to. And I'm not suggesting it's all this audience. I'm not yet that arrogant to know which ones are out there. But I bet you they're God-fearing people, reasonable people, people who aren't bigoted, pay their taxes, and truly, truly admire and empathize with the agony of the rays. They don't want their child. That's because we failed. The federal government has failed to put out an education program to people. We have failed throughout the country to educate our children, our parents, our teachers, our principals. We need to educate on all levels. So it's not surprising that there are people in this audience and in your viewing audience that are fearful. And I think that if we can get the facts out before there's a, ch the a child coming to school, we can prevent a lot of it. Once the child has come, or look, don't even talk schools, workplace, we've heard, we've mm -hmm. heard about things tonight, yeah. today. Uh, the workplace scene, if we can get to people and educate them, not that we're going to win completely, but while the federal government is debating who should be told and what should be told, we're not getting that information out. Uh, I, yeah, uh, let me just, I, I, I'll get you, I promise. I, you know, I hate to interrupt attorneys. Are you there? Hi. Hello. Go ahead, caller. Um, I'm 26 years old and I have AIDS. When my boss found out and my landlord found out, I was immediately fired from my job and stripped from my apartment. I was also three months pregnant at the time. I had an abortion and now living with my parents. And um, I'm like really, I can't hardly ever go outside because I'm really paranoid that someone will find out that I have AIDS. Uh, may we ask how you contracted AIDS? Um, we're not sure yet, but we're pretty, my um, lover, ex-lover was Bisexual, I think. Your what? My ex-lover. Your ex-lover was? Bisexual. Bi. Uh, is, was the baby by him? Yes. Does he know? Uh, yes. You aborted the child? Yes. Uh, your, your folks have received you? Mm-hmm. And everything's good there? Well, yeah. 
But you can't, you feel you can't even go get a job? Yeah, I'm scared. I mean, I, I don't want anyone else to have a contact, um, get AIDS from me. You're afraid you'll give it to someone else? Yes. Uh, so you, uh, you're going to stay home for the rest of your life? Um, uh, yeah, yes, I'm not paranoid. You're not paranoid or you are? I am. How, how emotionally, how are you doing? Um, okay. I, I'm, I'm okay emotionally. But, I'm but not. you sound to me like a 26-year-old woman with no future at all. I don't believe, this may upset a lot of people out there, but I don't believe I have any future. But you won't if you don't believe that. Um. Is it possible you're letting fear and ignorance control your life? Maybe. Can I yeah, respond but, to that? Sure. Can I respond to that? This, this lady is, is just one example of what is happening all over this country. There are parents keeping children at home. There are people hiding because they're afraid of what's going to happen. They're afraid what's happened to the race will happen to them. And you're right. She has no future unless she's invited, unless she's welcomed by our society to come out and let us help her. And, and Dr. Silverman spoke of education. And I, 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 I say to that lady, she should go to her doctor. Yeah. She should go come out and talk to someone because there is help. Yeah. Uh, I just have the comment to say that, that I don't think it's ignorance necessarily, but lack of faith in the medical establishment um, and feeling that doctors don't really know everything there is to know about the disease. And so We've our gone from doctor tell me everything to I don't believe anything you say. Right. Yeah, I think a problem with that is that we're expecting absolutes about this disease when we don't about any other disease. We know more about this disease in a shorter period of time than any other disease in the history of man. What we don't know is a cure, and what we don't know right now is a vaccine. But through over 40,000 people and epidemiologic studies, we know how it's transmitted. We know that healthcare workers who are exposed intimately Day after day, millions every day, we have a, maybe a dozen, maybe, who have stuck themselves, cut themselves, and gotten large quantities of the virus into them. Out of millions. So the risk is minuscule to healthcare workers, to co-workers, to schoolmates. It's, it's not even to be uh, described. And we'll be back in just a moment. But here's a tasty fiber breakthrough that's brand new. It's the traffic. It's for brand new. It's a breakthrough. I said for brand new. Oh. Kellogg's new traffic blends the goodness of wheat, corn, barley, and oat brands. It's nutritious. In dark, hearty flakes. It's terrific. With almond-covered raisins and almond slivers. It's the traffic. The traffic. It's for brand new. The miracle of clean water. Nature's gift to a thirsty world. It celebrates life, nourishes it, refreshes it. The miracle of clean water is a lesson AquaPure never forgot. That's why our purification process gives you drinking water even nature would be proud of, delivered to your business or home. Call AquaPure and pour yourself a miracle. You'll save a lot when you stop at the Swap Shop. So spin on in, it's the place of your dreams. Low prices on boots, low prices on jeans. You name it, we've got it. You'll find everything. More tools and electronics than you've ever seen. There's bargains galore better than any old store. So drive on in, let the fun begin at the Delray Twin Drive-In and the Riviera Drive-In. When you stop at the Swap Shop. Chances are, eating an entire Sara Lee pound cake right now would be inappropriate. But eating an entire Sara Lee pound cake snack wouldn't. Nobody doesn't like Sara Lee. Nothing's more dangerous than being alone with an entire Sara Lee chocolate cake. So we're introducing our snack size cake. That way, it's only a little bit dangerous. Nobody doesn't like Sara Lee. 
America's baby boomers are about to do it again. They're challenging our very idea of old age and pioneering a new ageless America. Now, LifeQuest shows you how to join this race for a longer life. Find out how medical advances are slowing the aging process, how living better can help you live longer, and what you can do now for a more satisfying old age in your future in Ageless America on LifeQuest. Tonight at 8 on TV5. Those are the parents uh, of the uh, Rays, and you saw a picture of those children looking uh, right out of uh, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, too. Uh, we've already established that the uh, three of the uh, Ray children, uh, suffering as they do from hemophilia, are, uh, have been tested HIV positive, meaning they are candidates for the AIDS symptoms, and uh, they created quite a stir in Arcadia, Florida. Uh, do you have, just curiously, do you have any target city in mind? I mean, you, maybe you don't want to say. I don't know. Do you, do you know where you want to live? We're going to stay in Florida because we have a lot of friends here. We've got a fantastic doctor there. Arcadia? I wouldn't want to give up. No, no, in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> just in Florida. We don't know where, but it's going to be in Florida. May I ask you something? With that young woman being paranoid, how does your children deal with the possibility of what might happen? They're so young to have to deal with such a thing. That's true, but you know, from the beginning, we, you know, after we were forced really into telling them, um, we've been very open and very honest and explained it to them. And kids are a lot stronger than we give them credit for, and I, it's hard on them, but they realize that, you know, there is a possibility, and we just have learned to take a day at a time. Yes, ma'am. I'm just wondering. Um, we realize now that the adults seem to be prejudiced or ignorant. I'm wondering how the other children treated your children. The other children in school treated our children real well. I mean, Friday afternoon was the night, the day before, well, the night, that night our house burnt. But anyways, Friday they came home, they were happy, they had made friends in school. And the kids that didn't want anything to do stayed away. There was no calling of names in school or anything like that. Uh, basically, the ch children accepted them better than the parents did. Yeah. Um, well, we had a photo of you accompanying your kids to school. Go ahead, I'll show you that in just a second. In our school last year, we had a uh, AIDS Education Week, and I learned a lot. Uh, the movie that they showed was kind of scary, but they had a physician there to answer all the questions. And I know a lot more about the disease now, and I'm more comfortable about it because we are, and this sounds pretty bad, but we are the AIDS generation, and we should be the ones who are educated about it. And I think that if the, they educated uh, the children in Arcadia, you wouldn't have this much of a problem. I admire your school for teaching, and I think all schools ought to follow suit. Yes. What are the children doing about school this year? Hopefully they're going to be starting school in the next week or so. Um, like I said, we have not really said where we're going to be because we'd like to get them in. There's with the a excuse little me, Miss Ray. That's the AP photo. How'd you like to be in this spot? Boy, here is Daddy out on the line. He wants his kids to be educated just like you do. And half the student body is out is absent from school that day. Yeah. I want to know why it is that uh, such a private matter as, as an AIDS test or an HIV test was, was made so public in Arcadia. I mean, why did they have to know? Well, what happened there is that I went and talked to my minister because, I mean, it's hard to deal with when you first find out because I didn't know anything about AIDS and I was scared. And I went to my minister and shortly afterwards he came and told me that he was receiving phone calls, that he was going to be sued, people were going to pull their kids out of church. And at this point, I didn't think clear enough to wonder where the people learned it from, and we just figured everybody knew, and I went to the school because I didn't want some parent, you know, going into a classroom and yelling and screaming at my child who didn't even know at the time that they had tested positive. And that was what forced us also into telling the children. And for like five or six months, we didn't say anything. We tried to work with the school board. We had homebound tutor, and it just got to be too much. The children were falling behind, and it just got worse and worse. And, uh, you, you think that the source of the information then was the, was the pastor, was the minister? At this point, I, re I would have to say that I think that he was afraid, he and the former minister. And I really don't think anybody called him. I think this is something that they said among themselves and decided, yeah. well, we just don't want him there. I got, I got my lawyer here. As you know, we don't move <laughs> without one. I don't leave my house without a lawyer. Listen, how's this now? Your husband goes to the doctor and gets tested and he's got AIDS. 
and then six months later, you get it. Can you sue the doctor for not telling you? Or does the patient-doctor confidentiality obtain? Here's, here's the man with the answer to everything, Mr. Edelstein. I don't know. Well, we're going to... Hey! A first! A first! A lawyer said I don't know! But a lawyer with uh, ability and some confidence is able to say, I don't know. We're bringing on this lawsuit probably within the next few weeks. The medical community is dealing with it now. The age-honored uh, patient-physician yeah, privilege, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, is what? probably going to be breached. The overriding public policy is probably going to dictate that the physician must reveal, because of public policy, to the other person that his patient has AIDS. And we'll be back in, I'll give you a chance, just a moment. A lot of people who don't think they need a hearing aid may already have one. Up two streets, take a right. He said up two streets and take a right. They bring their hearing aid with them wherever they go. What did he say? He said he doesn't want to leave her, but he has to. And if they forget their hearing aid, they'll find one. Vinaigrette. She said Italian, Thousand Island, or vinaigrette. Vinaigrette. Now there's a hearing aid for people reluctant to wear one. It's called Miracle Ear. Because hard as it may be to believe, that's precisely what it is. If you have nerve deafness and have been told nothing can be done for you, Miracle Ear could help. If you can hear people talk but can't understand all the words, Miracle Ear could help. If you're concerned how a hearing aid will make you look, people probably won't even know you're wearing a Miracle Ear unless you tell them. Miracle Ear is so tiny, it's practically unnoticeable, but a hearing problem can be very noticeable. Next? She said next. Oh. Still reluctant? Maybe you need more information. Call 1-800-824-3900 and receive this free booklet. You'll get the facts you need to make an informed, intelligent decision about your hearing needs and which steps, if any, to take next. You'll even learn how you can get a free hearing test. Just call 1-800-824-3900. Huh? He said speak now or forever hold your peace. Oh. Ask your doctor about Miracle Ear or call 1-800-824-3900. The phone call is free. The helpful information is free. Our hearing test is also free. Call Miracle Ear now because when you're losing your hearing, the worst thing to do is nothing. What did he say? <laughs> Let's remember the children is at post office box 114507 Miami, Florida, 33111. This organization is... It's, it's for families who have children who are HIV positive to provide the medical support, legal support, and the resources they need to handle this obviously terribly difficult situation. Let us uh, check your uh, stats for just a second, and I know we're running out of time. 17 is the number on the computer. AIDS in the United States, reported cases, 41,700. 24,000 people have died of AIDS. That's on the record. We can only speculate what is not reported. What's important, I think, to the epidemiologists, all the people who are working very hard on this issue, is the um, rapidity with which uh, this virus appears to be spreading. Uh, hemophiliac adults with AIDS number only 373. And we only have uh, 30 hemophilic children reported with AIDS. Small consolation to the raids because they are in that number. Um, you wanted to ask. Excuse no, no, me. No, 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 no. Their children are not in that number. No. I'm children. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> have they have, do not have the symptoms. Not I beg your pardon. These are children with AIDS who are symptomatic. No. Who, yes. Uh, these are, have AIDS. Right. I am corrected. Yes. I'd like to ask one question. Must they tell the school if the children have AIDS? Do you have to go in and say, my children have AIDS? No, no. you don't. You're not required to. Yeah. And in fact, I would recommend that you, you not don't. do it in light <laughs> of what's well, happening. I didn't know if there was a law. Hang yeah. on. I just wanted to ask Debbie how the rumor started that she had AIDS. She never did say. No one knows and no one can tell me. It just came from nowhere, mm -hmm. literally. And then it just kept growing and ballooning until... Like the Rays, I had to publicly go out and
put my name on the headline just to say that I, I, don't I don't have, have a, a yeah, the I tragedy is it. real or imagined the yes. kind of reaction that you would can you up. hear me dr. Barbosa yes, sir. okay uh, you are a physician for the Ray children say hello to your doctor hi I, and you're chief of pediatric hematology at all Children's Hospital in St. Petersburg, Florida. That's right. And you are, it says here, one of the nation's expert on AIDS. My apologies to you, uh, doctor, for not having more time. You wanted to say what on behalf of uh, hemophiliacs and uh, the rays especially? Well, I just want to address the issue a little bit more in general, that the potential for viral transmission in school through child-to-child -child contact is purely theoretical supported by not a single documented cases in the whole country. Uh, you're saying, did you say theoretical? Right, it's purely theor theoretical. So in other words, that in the real practical world, there is nothing to fear here. We don't have one single documented case of AIDS contracted in the school system in our country, sir. What yeah. much more proof do you need? Yeah. It's amazing how prevalent the fear is that everyone is giving yeah. blood. It just in the event that they get yeah, so they'll have their own blood. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Watch it. I have a question for that last caller, um, the poor girl that was so paranoid. Is there counseling available for these people with AIDS so they don't have to feel that they're living in fear for the rest of their life? Attorney Kavanaugh. Th there's counseling available, and there is legal help available, and and there's doctors who can talk to them. But the fear has become so overwhelming that we're just driving these poor people underground yes, when sir. we need to be helping them. Yes, sir. We've, we've become lacking. Uh, uh, if the Rays need a babysitter, my wife and I will be happy to. Very <laughs> good. <laughs> Thank you. The Stanford community is very lucky to have an AIDS task force, which we're presenting a panel Saturday night at the. Wednesday night at the Jewish Community Center on all the issues related to our community, Stanford community. It's not a bad idea for everybody to do that. Like, we, you know, we all ought to get in a gymnasium somewhere and talk about this. Yeah. So I want to know when America's going to grow up and take responsibility for this disease. Yeah. Um, the best thing to know is that you're not going to get it unless you, you try to get it because we know how it's given and you can't get it unless you ask to get it. Yes, ma'am. How many documented cases have been revealed that children have, uh, parents have caught AIDS from their children, and not one. people Absolutely are afraid to send their children to school. Mm -hmm. These people live with their children, and they've never right. ca caught No them. household yes. case. No. no. I've talked to mothers no. who nurse, uh, who, uh, who are uh, raising uh, babies with AIDS, infants mm -hmm. who are born of mothers who, and they switch, you know, her mother with mm -hmm. pablum and uh, the, the baby food and the testing, body fluids exchange. No, no case of There's transfer. Excuse me, there's even one spectacular case from Europe of a child, uh, someone in an institution who bit healthcare workers multiple times and not a single person converted. Uh, Phil, I just have a question in response to a young man over here that said you're only going to get AIDS if you want it. Um, I think that's what you were saying. I'm in a first responder as a firefighter and I have a definite concern um, being out in the public all the time. I am concerned about taking it home uh, on my skin, possibly, or, you know, from skin, blood to skin contact, after taking a shower. Uh, what's the long-term effect of being on skin? I, well, I have no problem on unbroken skin. I think when you, as a first responder, whether you're a policeman, fireman, EMS person, if you're going to be dealing with body fluids, blood, vomit, urine, feces, whatever it is, you should wear gloves. And it should have done it years ago, regardless of what the patient is. There is no Infection control guidelines for AIDS. Good basic infection control guidelines will prevent you from getting it. Okay. Could you please tell us then about the researcher who developed AIDS recently and there was no there were no open wounds and no exchange of bodily fluids? He developed it through the research environment. Well, he was in a lab dealing with the virus, concentration of the virus. We're not saying it's absolutely impossible. Well, there, and there also is a document, a, a, a researcher or a doctor cut his finger. <laughs> oh, but you're, uh, uh, you, you can, if you cut your finger and you're exposed yeah. to the, then you can get it. But about a one in a thousand chance even from that kind of an exposure. I have the uh, permission of the Rays to introduce their kids, and I'm real pleased to be able to do so. Come on in here, Rays. Uh, we have Richard, 10, Robert, 9, Randy, 8. And Candy. <laughs> New cafe toothpaste decaffeinates your smile. Coffee and tea can stain your smile. 
like they stain your cup. New Caffrey gets out coffee and tea stains better than the leading toothpaste. Caffrey decaffeinates your smile every day. Toothpaste or gel? Folks, it's official. The big mouth is now the fresh mouth. Thanks to new super strength Polident. Now with a minty mouthwash ingredient, so it freshens up dentures as it cleans them. Try new Polident Green for a mouth freshening clean. An incredible offer from Castro Convertibles. Buy this queen-size Castro with rattan arms on sale at only $8.99, and we'll give you this swivel rocker free. Both rattan pieces for $8.99. Or pay the regular price for this Castro, and we'll give you this matching chair free. Or buy this design at the regular price and get this chair free. And every Castro features our own mechanism and mattress. Free rattan chair at every Castro showroom. Win Dixie Super Bonus. Spend a dollar, get a stamp. Fill a certificate, bring it back, and save. Extra, extra, read all about it. Win Dixie has a super bonus on super brand grade A large white eggs, 29 cents a dozen. Brew up some savings on chock full of nuts coffee, a super bonus dollar 49. Get another super bonus on Coronet paper towels, now an incredible nine cents for a jumbo roll. At Win Dixie, America's supermarket. At Schumacher Buick in West Palm and Ralph Buick in Delray Beach, we've got 1,200 cars to sell. And that puts you in a very powerful position. And now you get GMAC financing as low as 1.9% or cash back of up to $1,000 on select model Buicks. There's never been a year in memory when you were more in control. Check out the Buick Connection. Schumacher Buick in West Palm, Ralph Buick in Delray Beach, because you're in the driver's seat. And that's exactly where we want you to be. Hello, I'm Don Ross. To meet the needs of our growing community, the Potomac Country Day School, adjacent to the College of Boca Raton, is now accepting enrollment from pre-kindergarten through grade 12. At the Potomac Country Day School, each child develops skills in a warm and friendly atmosphere. In a relaxed and challenging environment, the Potomac Country Day School student gains academic, physical, and social growth. Now is the time to prepare your child for the future. Come join us at the Potomac Country Day School. Uh, I want you to take another look at this good-looking family here. Uh, you had a call or you had a brief comment? Yes, I'm from Swansea where we had an AIDS patient in school two years ago, and it was completely opposite of Arcadia, and I just want to extend my, my real, I really appreciate how this family is reacting. They're doing a great job. And I in other words, there's no, hysteria isn't everywhere. No, no, not Hang at on all. just a second. What are you going to do? Where are you now? Are you in a hotel? Or Service is provided and promotional fees business. paid by the no, farm. No, no, I don't want to know. I... At Volvo, we've been safety testing our cars almost as long as we've been building them because we want to make sure our customers keep coming back. True Value's own Harvard brand three-piece cutlery set featuring hardwood handles and stain-free steel blades is available exclusively at True Value hardware stores. The Drake offers an exciting weekend in New York at a special price. The only Swiss hotel on Park Avenue. For reservations, call 800-DRAKE-NEW-YORK or 212-421-0900. I asked them how they're living and Candy said fine. <laughs> they are living in an apartment at a, obviously an undisclosed location.